What if you stopped making decisions? Not because you were forced to, but because you started believing AI is simply better at everything. That future isn't science fiction. It's already here. And OpenAI's CEO just revealed the one AI risk that scares him the most. And it's not killer robots or hacking. It's you, choosing not to choose. Welcome to the silent surrender, where we slowly hand over our minds without even noticing. The rise of the machine brain. AI isn't just getting better, it's becoming invisible. You don't see the algorithms behind streaming services, but they're steering your attention, your habits, maybe even your identity. And now with AI models, you're not just consuming AI suggestions. You're delegating choices, what to write, what to learn, what to say in emails, messages, even love letters. We are voluntarily stepping aside because we're not as good at the job anymore. That statement should haunt us. The chess experiment that predicted everything. Sam Altman used chess to explain this silent collapse of human agency. When IBM's Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov in 1997, humans didn't give up. They teamed up with AI. The best chess players were hybrids, human plus machine. But that golden era lasted only three months. After that, AI got so good that human interference actually reduced performance. Humans couldn't see the deeper patterns AI was catching. So they stopped contributing. And this wasn't just a chess match. It was a mirror showing what happens when a system becomes too smart to question. What happens to the human brain when we stop choosing? Here's the terrifying part. Your brain is built to choose. The prefrontal cortex, the part behind your forehead, lights up every time you weigh options, make plans or resist impulses. But the moment you start outsourcing those choices to AI, that part of your brain starts dimming down. Think of it like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. Real experiment, Martin Seligman, 1970s. Dogs were given electric shocks they couldn't escape. Eventually they stopped trying, even when escape became possible. This became known as learned helplessness, a psychological state where the brain gives up control even when it still has it. That's what's happening now. But instead of shocks, we're numbed by algorithmic perfection. We ask AI to decide because we're tired, unsure, overwhelmed, and AI never is. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good AI helps us overcome bias. It doesn't get hungry or stressed. It can analyze data better than we ever could. Doctors use it to catch cancers. Students use it to understand complex ideas. CEOs use it to write better pitches. The bad. The more we rely on it, the less we practice critical thinking. We stop asking why. And that's dangerous, because understanding why something works is what makes us human, not just efficient. The ugly. We might reach a point where people in power, presidents, CEOs, judges, start saying, chat GPT-9, you decide. And when that happens, who's really running the world? Altman imagines a future where leaders can't even understand AI's reasoning, but trust it anyway. That's not evil. That's indifference. The scariest kind of surrender is the one no one notices. How AI might kill startups too. Here's another layer Altman hinted at. In a world where one AI model outperforms every domain, from coding to design to writing, startups become obsolete. Why hire a small team when ChatGPT can build an entire company? This might centralize power into the hands of a few and slowly dissolve the diversity of ideas, voices and risks that drive innovation. We won't need new entrepreneurs. The choice that still belongs to you. So what do we do? We don't fight AI. We learn with it. But we also protect the one thing it doesn't have. Conscious choice. Moral responsibility. Curiosity. Imagination. Use AI to amplify your brain, not replace it. Because the moment we stop choosing for ourselves, even when it's inconvenient, messy and human, that's when we stop being human.